What's up guys? My name is Alex and in today's video we're going to talk about how you can move an Arduino onto a breadboard without using any external components. So basically we'll go from this to this. We're also going to talk about how you can burn a bootloader onto your uh, ATmega 328P chips. So if you bought new chips and you want to burn an Arduino bootloader, this is the video for you as well. Finally, we're going to take a look at how you can use an Arduino to burn some code onto the AT Mega chip once it's on the breadboard. So if any of these topics uh, interest you, stick around. Okay, so let's explain the setup on the breadboard first. So I'm just going to move the Arduino out of the way for a second. Um, as you can see, the setup here is pretty simple. Uh, I've bridged the, the power and the ground lines over here so they can have them on both sides. And I've just plugged in an 80 mega 328p chip, the same chip that you have on an Arduino board. I've just plugged it into the breadboard. Now, uh, I encourage you to watch my previous video on how you can actually set this up using a few external components to replicate an Arduino on a breadboard because I go into great detail explaining all the pins here and what they do. I'm going to go a little bit faster in this video. So if you're curious, you can watch that video to find out the details. So in that video, we, we talked about pin one over here and pin one is the reset pin. So you type pin one to uh, plus five volts if you want to have it running normally. And then you tie it to ground uh, if you want to actually reset your uh, your chip. So I could actually tie this to ground over here, sorry, to, pipe, to five volts over here. Uh, but do, you don't actually have to do that uh, with the chip because uh, it does that internally. So in order to actually minimize this application as much as possible, uh, we're actually not even going to tie it to five volts. So just assume it is. Uh, if you actually want to reset it, you have to tie it to ground to actually reset it. Now, uh, pins seven and eight over here are the power to the 80 mega chip. Uh, so seven connects to plus five volts and then eight connects to ground. And then on the other side, um, pins uh, 20, 21 and 22 are related to the analog to digital converter on the 80 mega chip. Uh, so in this case, pin 20 connects to five volts. Uh, pin 21 is the reference voltage. Again, I talked more about it in the previous video. I'm going to put a link to that video in the description below and maybe a card on screen right now if you want to take a look. Uh, we don't actually need a, a reference voltage right now because I'm not going to use the analog to digital converter. So that's why you don't see anything there. And then uh, pin 22 is just ground. Uh, the analog to digital converter needs a separate uh, power supply. It, it's not using these same lines. So that's why we have to provide something here. Uh, if you're actually going to use an ADC, you need to uh, provide the plus 5 volts through a low pass filter. Again, we're not going to use it in this application, so we're just tying them to 5 volts and ground, and, and that's basically it. So after you have all of this set up, you're basically ready to run an application onto this uh, 80 mega chip. Now, you may be wondering at this point, what's the catch, right? Because in our previous video, we talked about how you need a 16 megahertz oscillator here, a couple of capacitors, a couple of resistors, stuff like that. And over here, we don't have anything yet. I'm saying that it's a, it's a complete uh, application of this chip. Well, uh, there's a little bit of a trade-off here. So the Arduino, as you have it here, or the 80 mega chip here, runs at 16 megahertz. When you're converting that to run on a breadboard using a 16 megahertz oscillator, uh, it runs obviously at the same speed. However, uh, kind of a little known fact about these chips is that they actually have an 8 megahertz internal oscillator. So if you're willing to make the trade-off to run your applications at 8 megahertz instead of 16 megahertz, then you can avoid putting in that oscillator chip uh, sorry, the oscillator uh, circuit with the little oscillator uh, crystal and the two capacitors. Uh, you can avoid putting those in and you can run it uh, as is. Now, the trick here is that by default, uh, these chips or rather these chips that come with the Arduino uh, have a bootloader that is set up to run with the 16 megahertz chip. Um, meaning in order to run it in this configuration with the 8 megahertz chip, you actually have to burn a different bootloader uh, to get that up and running. And that's basically what we're going to take a look at, at how to do next. Uh, this is also useful for people that have bought new chips that don't have an Arduino bootloader on it at all. So I'm going to explain to you guys how you can burn a proper 16 megahertz bootloader if you wanted to in order to set up new chips to be able to use them with an Arduino. So the first thing you want to do is to download the files for the Arduino bootloader. Uh, 
If you go into the description below, I'll, I have three links in there, which are the bootloader files, uh, depending for which version of the Arduino IDE you're using. In my case, I'm using a version 1.8.13. So the latest version of the bootloader files, which are, I believe, for version 1.6 and above, will work just fine. If you're using an older version of the IDE, then you'll need to download a different version of the bootloader files. Once you download uh, one of those uh, bootloader files, uh, you'll end up with a, uh, with a zip uh, with the contents that you see over here. Uh, so there's this uh, breadboard folder and there's a couple of folders underneath and a couple of files underneath that. You'll need to extract that into your Arduino sketchbook folder and you can find the location of that if you open up your IDE and go into File, Preferences. This is the sketchbook location. So if you just go to this location, your hard drive, and I have it open here, I'm gonna close this for now, and I have it open here, uh, this is where your sketches go. If you don't have this hardware folder, you can just manually create it, just make sure it's called hardware exactly as you see here, lowercase. And then if you enter that thing, this is where you will extract the contents of that zip file with the uh, bootloader files. So if you see here, uh, these are the files that, that uh, we extracted. I'm just going to go back. Um, this is what's going to be in the zip. So this breadboard folder. And this is the same folder that I extracted over here. So just put it in there exactly as it is in the zip file. Uh, and you'll need to restart your IDE so that it actually can recognize the bootloader uh, in there and you can actually use it. Okay, so once that's set up uh, and you've restarted your IDE, uh, you're gonna end up with this guy over here. Um, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna burn a very specific application onto your normal Arduino Uno. So I'm just gonna program that application on this Arduino the way I do any other normal application. Uh, basically, if you go into File and then uh, go into Examples, right here, I don't know if it's going to be exactly number 11 for you in your IDE, but you should be looking for Arduino ISP, exactly as you see it over here, and then open up this Arduino ISP application. So this application will basically allow your Arduino to act as a bootloader programmer for other chips. Uh, so you, this needs to be burnt onto your normal Arduino uh, and then we'll go from there. So let's just make sure the settings are fine. The board is Arduino Uno. That's what I have. That's fine. Uh, the port is okay. Uh, we're using an AVR ISP uh, programmer. That's fine. Um, so that's all, that's all fine. So we just upload this application again, the way we just normally do with any other application on our Arduino. Okay, there we go, that's done. Uh, so now we actually have to connect the Arduino. Let me just go back to it. Now we actually have to make the connection between the Arduino board and the extra chip that we have on the breadboard. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so I have a few jumper cables here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from pin 13 on the Arduino side. So right over here, uh, let's see, that's pin 13 and then pin 13 goes to pin 19 um, on the 80 mega chip that's on the breadboard. If you remember from the previous video, uh, the pin numbering on the, uh, on the chip goes from this little notch over here. You count uh, the upper left side is pin number one and then it goes down to three, four up to 14 and then it goes up from here, 15, 16 and then upwards up to 28. So pin 13 over here uh, needs to go just below, uh, just below pin 20, so pin 19, just below where you plug this into 5 volts. So I'm gonna plug that in here uh, to pin 19 of the chip. Uh, again, we said that counting starts from here, so it's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Um, all right, and now the next one is uh, pin 12 on the Arduino goes uh, to pin 18. So the next pin in line going this way. Uh, so basically you're just, uh, you're just going uh, one pin lower on the Arduino side and then one pin lower over here. And that's going to be the pattern for everything else. Um, so pin 11 here is going to go to the next one. So that's pin 17. Uh, those are going to be connected like that. And then 
pin 10 on the Arduino side is going to go to the reset pin of the AT Mega chip, which is pin number one. So that's the pin right over here. Making sure I didn't miss a pin. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, again, just to recap, 13 goes to 19, 12 goes to 18, 11 goes to a 17, and then 10 goes to one pin number one, the reset pin. Um, now all we need to do is to actually provide uh, power and ground for uh, for the chip as well. And the Arduino has pinouts for this on the left side over here. Uh, so this is the five volts pin. And then this is the crown pin. And they're labeled five volts in GND. Um, and I'm just going to connect positive to positive and negative to negative over here. Just like that. Okay, so with that, the physical connections are done. Now we can move to the Arduino ID to actually burn the bootloader on there. So in here, there's a couple of things we need to do. Uh, first of all, uh, it doesn't matter that I have the, oops, sorry about that. It doesn't matter that I have the Arduino ISP uh, program opened up because I'm going to burn a bootloader now, not an actual program. Um, if you go into tools, board, now you're actually going to switch from Arduino Uno here to this guy. And this is the um, uh, bootloader that we just added. So if you're not seeing this option here, uh, breadboard AVR and then the uh, 80 mega with 8 megahertz internal clock. If you're not seeing this option, that means that the process that I described earlier, where you download the bootloader files and you install them, uh, is wrong. Uh, and the first thing you need to be aware of that you need to restart the IDE after adding those files so that this option shows up. Uh, if it's still not showing up, uh, leave a note in the comments and I'll try to help you out. Uh, there's really nothing else to it unless you chose the wrong version of the bootloader maybe for your IDE version. Uh, be careful of that as well. Uh, if it's not showing up, uh, add a comment. I'll try to help you out uh, specifically. Um, in any case, so once you see this option here, you select it. So you see now the board has changed. Uh, the port number is still going to be the same uh, for me. That's COM3. Now, uh, this is the important part. For programmer here, you'll change it. Uh, this is usually the default uh, with the Arduino IDE. You'll change it to Arduino as ISP. Now, imp another important note is over here, there's Arduino ISP, and then there's Arduino as ISP. This is the one you want to select, Arduino as ISP. So once uh, those, are, those are selected, now you can go to burn bootloader. Um, again, it doesn't really matter what you have over here because this is not the application that you're programming right now. You're burning a bootloader and specifically you're burning the eight megahertz internal clock uh, bootloader. So I'm just going to click here. And as you can see here, I actually got an error. And this is a very common error that you might get if your chip is already configured to run at 16 megahertz. So you see here it says invalid uh, device signature. What you actually need to do, unfortunately, in this case, is to add that 16 megahertz oscillator in the two capacitors, like in the previous video. And you'll only need to do this once so, so that you can configure the chip to run at 8 megahertz and then you don't need them anymore. But let's do this so that you can see what happens. So I'm just going to add a 16 megahertz oscillator between pins and 9 and 10, right here. Go, uh, and then I'm gonna add two uh, 22 picofarad capacitors uh, between uh, those pins nine and ten and ground. So again, you're connecting the oscillator between pins nine and ten on the 80 mega 328p, and then uh, on the same pins, uh, the two 22 picofarad capacitors go to ground. Uh, now, uh, having set this up, let's go back to the code and try this again. And I'm just going to go to tools, burn bootloader again with the settings as, as I had them before. And now we actually got a success message. So if you bought an empty 80 mega chip, uh, chances are this is going to work uh, the f in the first try without having to do this step. If you already had a chip that had a 16 megahertz bootloader burnt on there, you might need to add the oscillator just so you can burn an 8 megahertz uh, bootloader and then you can remove those because you won't need them. So at this point, 
Um, this chip is already set up to run without the oscillator. So I can remove the oscillator and the two capacitors that I added because I won't need those. And that's pretty much it. At this point, I can, um, I can disconnect the power. And I can disconnect all of these connectors. And this is now a working 8 megahertz, 80 mega, 328p chip. Now, uh, the next question is, so how do we program something on there? Um, so in the previous video, I actually showed you how to use something like this, which is a USB to serial uh, converter. Um, it's, um, it's an FTD1232. Uh, in my particular example, there's a couple of different versions of these. Um, and you can refer to that video to take a look at how you can use, how you can do that. But now in this video, I'm actually going to show you how you can use the Arduino itself to act as a programmer for this chip on the breadboard. Uh, just so you guys have uh, different ways of doing that. Uh, and I think it's helpful to know. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to disconnect the Arduino from power. I'm going to disconnect it from my PC. Okay, there we go. And... Uh, I need to actually remove the 80 mega chip from the Arduino. Uh, this is because when you're actually using the Arduino ID to program an application onto it, um, what's happening is the Arduino is going to program this chip by default. Uh, if it doesn't find that chip, then you can actually program something else that's on a breadboard. So you want to make sure to remove the chip from the Arduino before you try this procedure. I'm just going to use a screwdriver and I'm going to lift it up uh, carefully on both sides. And you don't want to rush this too much just so you don't bend the, the legs of the chip. Okay, there we go. Um, I just bent the last one a little bit. All right. So uh, this is going to be a working chip. You can just leave that off to the side. You're going to plug it back in afterwards, after you're done with this procedure. Uh, but for now, you actually just need the Arduino without any chips in there. I'm going to plug it back in. Obviously, nothing's going to really run right now because um, there's nothing. There's no uh, processor chips sort of or microcontroller plugged in. And now you want to uh, make the following configuration. So right over here in the corner, there's an RX and a TX pin on the Arduino. I don't know if you can see those labels right here. So you take the RX and you connect it to the TX of the 80 mega chip. Um, the RX, uh, sorry, the TX on the 80 mega chip is pin two, I believe. Um, so this is the reset pin, this is pin two. And then the TX of the Arduino uh, which is right over here goes to the RX uh, which is pin number uh, 3 on the microcontroller here so RX to TX, TX to RX uh, and finally you need to connect uh, the reset pin to the reset pin of the microcontroller I'm just trying to find a longer jumper cable. There we go. And the reset pin is uh, right over here. Just make sure I get the right pin. It's a bit awkward because of the camera. Okay. Uh, the reset pin over there goes to pin number one uh, on the 80 mega microcontroller. Actually, one thing I forgot to mention is to also hook up power and ground from the Arduino to the breadboard. Uh, and I also changed these wires with shorter ones so that it's just easier to follow. So uh, the ground wire is over here and then the 5 volts goes right next to it. And these will go to positive over here and negative over here. Okay, now we can actually go back to uh, our Arduino IDE to do the rest. Uh, so what we're going to do over here, let's try to upload the example basics blink. So the blink example is just the example where, where the LED that's tied to pin 13 of the Arduino just blinks. 
uh, is one of the most basic examples of an Arduino. Uh, once you have that selected, you want to go here and you make sure the board is the proper board. So in this case, I do want to still keep this selected, the 8 megahertz internal clock, because that's what I burned onto my uh, 80 mega 328 on the breadboard. Uh, obviously, if you're burning stuff on the Arduino Uno, you want to go here and you change this to Arduino Uno. I'm going to leave this for now. Uh, the port is fine. And now in here, this is important. Uh, you actually want to change this back to what it was. So you want to change it back to AVRISP. Um, and that's the, again, the default option that shows up uh, for a programmer. And now you don't uh, burn bootloader because that's not what we want to do. We just want to burn this as a regular application. So I'm just going to click upload here. And there we go. Now the blinking example should be uploaded to our 8 megahertz chip and let's just test it out to make sure that works. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect uh, the reset and I'm going to disconnect the RX TX. We no longer need those. Uh, I'm going to leave the power wires connected to the Arduino uh, just so I can supply the 5 volts needed to run the 80 mega 328p. Um, in your case, at this point, you may want to take this completely out uh, of this configuration and provide power from a battery or a separate power supply or anything. The Arduino has uh, no use at this point, basically. I'm just using it as a power supply in this example. So we just need to hook up something to uh, pin 13. This is pin 13 over here, which is pin 19 actually uh, on the chip over here. Okay, so I'm going to take a little jumper cable from P19 and I'm going to hook it up here. And then I'm going to take an LED uh, and I'm going to hook, hook it up so that the positive side, the longer lead of the LED uh, is facing towards the, um, the microcontroller, the AT mega chip. So the little cutout of the LEDs on this side and the longer lead uh, would be on, on this side. And then I'm just going to hook up the other side of that LED to ground through a resistor. Uh, I believe this is a 200 ohm resistor. Uh, it's not super important how large the value is as long as there's something so that uh, the LED doesn't draw too much current and uh, basically, oh, there we go. If you don't have a resistor, the LED might burn out because it's drawing too much current. Uh, and there you go, you can see that it's immediately blinking because it was already connected to power from the Arduino. Um, so as you can see, uh, the way to run this uh, is just by using the chip and then connecting power to the chip itself and then connecting power to the ADC even though we're not using it. Uh, other than that, you don't have to do anything else once you burn the 8 MHz uh, bootloader. Obviously, this part right here is just for testing purposes. You will connect whatever your project uses, different sensors, different LEDs, whatever. Um, the important thing to know is how to flash the bootloader in this case. So as long as you're willing to make the, the trade of not running your application at 16 megahertz, but running it at 8 megahertz, then you can really minimize this package by using pretty much just the chip and, and putting it on a breadboard or maybe on a PCB uh, or whatever you want. Now, uh, one final thing that, that's just left to show you is how you can actually uh, turn this thing back into a 16 megahertz bootloader Arduino chip in case you want to go back. Uh, and that's pretty simple as well. So let's get to it. So I'm going to disconnect the power here. I'm going to disconnect the resistor, the LED, this whole setup. Uh, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the a setup I showed you earlier for burning a bootloader, uh, almost everything is going to be identical and I'll, I'll show you what the differences are. So uh, I'm just going to go to exactly the same setup as I had before with pins uh, 13, 12, 11 and 10 connected to pins um, 19, 18, 17 and reset. Okay, that part we already saw. Uh, we can also connect the power back up. So I'm just gonna connect positive here, negative there. I actually made a small mistake. It's a pin 10 that actually goes to the reset pin, not the reset on the Arduino. 
And now, one final thing is we actually have to reintroduce the 16 megahertz clock in order to burn the 16 megahertz bootloader back on there. So, as before, we're going to connect the 16 megahertz crystal oscillator uh, between pins 9 and 10. And then we're going to connect the two 22 picofarad capacitors uh, between those pins and ground. All right. Uh, so basically the difference from, from when we were burning the bootloader the first time, actually this time we actually had to use the oscillator as well because this chip already had a 16 megahertz bootloader. Uh, but that's the only requirement here is that you actually have the 16 megahertz oscillator if you want to bring this back uh, to a uh, 16 megahertz chip state. I'm actually going to disconnect the Arduino from power or from the PC because we want to bring back this chip that already has the Arduino uh, ISP program on it. When you bring this chip back, just make sure that this notch in the chip right here corresponds to the notch on the Arduino right down there so that the orientation is not messed up. And now I'm going to plug it back in. So we already had the Arduino ISP program burnt onto here. Uh, if you didn't, if you're just following this or starting from scratch, uh, what you need to do is you open up uh, examples, Arduino ISP, Arduino ISP, and you burn this onto the Arduino chip first before doing anything else. Um, so I'm just going to do it just to show you. So uh, in here, now I'm going to switch the board to Arduino Uno. Because I'm actually going to program the, the chip on the Arduino, not the chip on the breadboard. Uh, and then this will be COM3, that's fine. And AVRSP, that's also fine. And I'm going to upload. So this makes sure that the Arduino uh, application that's running on here is set up to run um, the Arduino ISP. Now we go here. And remember how when we were burning the 8 MHz bootloader, we changed the board to... Um, 80 mega, 8 megahertz over here. Well, in this case, we're going to leave it as at Arduino Uno because now we want to actually program the chip that's on the breadboard to run at 16 megahertz, which is what this is. Uh, this is again fine. Over here, we have to go back as before to Arduino as ISP. And we go tools and then burn bootloader. And there we go. At this point, your breadboard chip is converted into a 16 megahertz Arduino bootloaded chip. Uh, basically, the way it comes from the factory. And that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, that's how you can run an 80 mega chip without external components using an 8 megahertz bootloader. And you also saw how to go back to a 16 megahertz bootloader if you so desire. And uh, you also saw how you can program the chip using an Arduino as a programmer just by removing this chip over here and then programming the one on the breadboard. Uh, if you like the content on this channel, uh, consider subscribing, liking, all that good stuff. Uh, and until next time, peace.